my name is Abigail. Welcome back to Polyglot Progress and welcome to my 2023 goals and plans video. I'm very excited to make this video. I am always really excited to make my New Year's goals videos, but I'm especially excited this year because I'm very, very excited for 2023. I had a really rough year in 2022 and I didn't really accomplish a lot of the things that I set out to, but I'm feeling really hopeful about this next year. And I'm also doing a lot of new things when it comes to how I set language goals and how I'm overall viewing language learning this next year. Year. And while I of course could at the end of this year or even halfway through this year decide that those new things are not working for me at all, I really love getting to try new things with my language learning and seeing what does or even doesn't work well for me. So in this video I'm gonna talk about my overall year goals and my six month goals and then I'm gonna talk about my month to month goals in just my monthly recap videos throughout this year. Since my main focus is really gonna be on my month to month goals instead of my year long goals, my year long goals are a lot broader than they usually are. And I'm specifically really doubling down on time-based goals this year because my theme for the overall year is just being more intentional with how I use my time. I talked a lot in my 2022 wrap-up video about how I feel like 2022 just kind of passed me by and I really spent a lot of time just kind of doing things that I don't get a lot out of. So this year the hope is to really focus on putting a certain amount of time into language learning and putting certain amounts of time into other aspects of my life. Not to be super analytical and be like I want to do this many hours of this because that's the amount I should do, but just because this past year I I put those many hours into things that I didn't care about and I want to push myself to put the amount of time that I want to into the things that I want to be doing. For me this is really just a way to be more intentional with my time, to be more flexible with my goals overall, and be able to work on a lot of different things with my language learning this year. And it also helps me just focus a lot more on the journey of language learning and not the destination, especially when for me the destination is always to be able to talk to people and consume media in other languages, which I can also do as part of the journey and should be doing as part of the journey. That overall time-based goal for the year is to log between 700 and 1,000 hours on Polylogger, and then the breakdown of that being at least 100 hours per each of my target languages, and then obviously there's some extra time in there too. Though I will say if I only do like 50 hours in Italian, that is also okay, but I definitely like to push myself to use it for at least 100 hours this year. To get 700 hours, that is about two hours each day, which is very typical for me when I actually do language stuff. And then when I don't, it's often like I try to squeeze a little bit in and it ends up being like five minutes. So if I just stay pretty consistent with that and on some days do a little bit more because there definitely are days where I hit more like four hours pretty easily and moving some of those five minute days to more like 30 minutes, I think it'll be pretty easy for me to hit 700 hours. I feel like that fits very nicely into my schedule. It sounds like a lot to do like two plus hours of language learning a day, but not all of that time is studying. I definitely also count watching shows in my target languages and talking to friends in my target languages, things like that that I do anyway to relax. Plus I do enjoy studying my target languages, so it's not like I am forcing myself to spend this extraordinary amount of time doing something that I hate. And if it starts to feel like that, this goal will definitely be changing. I really don't know if a thousand hours is really going to happen, but I did want to include that stretch goal because I'm really, really putting in a conscious effort to not really be on my phone anymore. And I think if I cut out all of the time that I spent scrolling through TikTok this year, I will find that I have a lot more time to just read books and watch movies and take lessons with my tutors and all of these things that I enjoy doing with my target languages and can really push myself to hit a much higher number. Also, as I will talk about in a minute, one of my goals is going to be involving language challenges again and if I do something like 40 hours seven days language challenge that will give a huge boost to the number of hours that I'm contributing towards my polylogger. Again this is very much so not meant to be like a cold analytical take on language learning of like I just need to put in 700 hours and that's all I care about. I am not hoping to do 700 to 1000 hours just for the sake of doing 700 to 1000 hours. It's just a way for me to reframe progress as putting effort in and using my time intentionally instead of having my progress be around my level or resources I complete and things like that when sometimes it just ends up taking a little bit longer to get through a book. As I've said a million times and I'm probably gonna say a million more times in this video, the focus for this year is really just being flexible and doing what works well for me in my languages this year, being really intuitive with how I learn languages, and making sure that 
my language learning really just aligns a lot better with how I want to be using my target languages ultimately. And I'm also definitely gonna use this year to put more of an emphasis on culture and media in my target languages and on not being so worried about having all of my languages be the same level or be at a super high level or anything. I just wanna work on having these really good connections with my target languages and better understandings of them and be able to do the things in them that I wanted to when I originally started learning them. And for me, framing my goals around time with my target languages languages just makes a lot more sense to make those happen. I am still setting goals with how I hope to use that time though, so overall my goals this year are, again, to complete at least one language challenge per language. I really enjoyed doing this last year. I am really excited to do it again this year and potentially every year to come in the future. I very much so do not have specific challenges picked out this year though, so if you have any that you recommend, I would love to hear about them. I'm almost definitely going to do a 40 hour, seven days language challenge at some point, and I I also think I want to do a speaking Bulgarian everyday challenge at some point because my Bulgarian speaking definitely needs it. But beyond that, I'm definitely open to suggestions, so let me know if you have any. I'm once again trying to read 50 books, and I actually have a stretch goal this year of trying to read 75 books. I have wanted to read 50 books in a year for many years now, and there's been several years where I've come pretty close with like 42 to 45 books, but I've never actually hit 50. And this is gonna be the year that I do. Like, I can feel it in my bones. It's gonna happen. And the reason that I'm then pushing myself and wanting to potentially read 75 instead is that I know my reading pace, and if I were just more consistent with how often I read, it would be very easy for me to read 75 books in a year. When I'm actually being consistent with reading every day, it's really common for me to read about three to four books in a week. So even if I don't finish that many books in a week, even if I'm reading really really, really long books or don't read every single day. All it takes is reading two books a week to hit 100 books, so 75 really should be doable. But I am going to be setting my Goodreads challenge at 50 just because I have not proved to myself yet that that is even possible since I keep getting close but not quite there. And of course, I would definitely like a lot of these books to be in languages other than English. I will talk a little bit more about that as we get to specific languages, but I'd really like to see at least like a quarter of the books that I read this year be in languages other than English. I'm also once again trying this year to watch 50 movies. This one is definitely a little bit harder for me than the book goal and I definitely don't know if it's gonna happen, but I'd really like to try because again, when I'm consistent with it, 50 is a very, very doable number. And I really should be watching more movies than I have been both in English and in all of my target languages. So I'm really hoping that I can make this happen this year. And along with that, I would like to keep watching a lot of series. That is definitely what I have more of an interest working on and writing. And I just enjoy really watching them. So I definitely would like to continue watching those and also figure out a better way to kind of track that this year. I feel I feel like without tracking the things that I'm reading and watching, it's very easy for me to blank on everything when people ask me what I've been reading or watching. And while I've been good about tracking my movies and books the last several years, I definitely still need to figure something out for TV series because I don't think I could even tell you everything that I've watched in 2022. And that means I definitely will not remember those things next year when I need to actually reference them. Now, I do feel like whenever I mention the number of books and movies that I want to read and watch, people are always taken a little bit back and are like, that is so many. So I just quickly like to provide a little bit of insight, which is that I'm currently mostly working in marketing, but I am still doing things within the film industry, mostly volunteering for festivals at the moment. I did go to film school and my goal is really to be writing things. So for me, watching things and reading things and kind of having that foundation of media is more than just me wanting to read and watch things for fun, it is also genuinely a part of my career. And the numbers that I pick every year for the amount that I want to read and watch, even if I haven't necessarily been hitting them in the past few years, are definitely based on what is realistic for me if I'm actually consistent with it. I know that those numbers are not realistic for everyone, that is totally fine. But yeah, they're not just exceptionally high numbers that I throw out there for no reason. However, one goal that I think may be a little unrealistic, but I 
do want to try to do this year is that I would like to try to finish filling up the journal that I use to practice writing in my target languages. This is it. I've been using the same one since March of 2016 according to the inside cover and in it I literally just practice writing in my target languages. It's all just a bunch of sort of diary entries in various languages. I'm currently this far in so it has taken me seven years almost to fill up this beginning bit and I have definitely like three, four times that left, which is why this is probably a goal that is just not remotely gonna happen, but I'm really gonna push myself to make it happen because writing helps my language output so much. Obviously, it betters my writing itself, but I find writing really, really helps my speaking as well. And like last year, I'd really love to push the ways that I'm using my target languages when it comes to writing, doing more creative writing type projects instead of just journal entries. So I'm setting myself the challenge of finishing this notebook and actually writing in this notebook an amount that fills it up, whether that's just journal entries or a short story or a poem, whatever I want to write in my target languages. I just want to push myself to fill this up. And lastly, for my overall goals coming over again from last year, I would again like to work on furthering my knowledge of linguistics and also working on conlanging. These are both things that kind of had to be cast aside last year because I wasn't putting a ton of time towards language learning and then I wanted to prioritize my actual target languages when I was. But since I'm hoping to be a bit more intentional with my time this year and hoping to just put more time into the things that I care about, I would really like to bring this back up again. Moving into specific language goals, I am going to be using a tiered kind of priority system again this year, but I'm only going to do it on a six month basis. So for my overall goals for the year, I have put these languages in absolutely no particular order. So for French, my overall goals this year are based around reading, speaking, and just getting outside of my comfort zone because I do once again want to work on getting myself closer to taking the DELF. I don't necessarily know yet if my goal is going to be to take the DELF this year. It's very hard logistically for me to kind of figure that out because I am going to have to travel to take the exam. And this past year, even if I had wanted to take it, there were just no days that actually made sense for me to travel and go and take the exam. However, as a very kind of loose goal, I am carrying that over from last year, even though literally last year I said that I was no longer working towards that and the reason for that is that now I have more of a reason to actually get the certificate. If I had taken the DELF last year it was just going to be as a personal goal. It was just going to be something that I wanted to do for myself. But I was reminded this year of how much I love translating and have just done a lot of thinking about where I would like to be in the next five years and the things I would like to be doing. And I've decided that I think I would like to take a translation course and get a translator certificate. And in order to do that, I need a French certification. So this is the first step in doing that. There is still no concrete timeline for this. Like I'm not not preparing to take a course like this at any point specifically. And if I don't take the DELF this year, that is totally fine, especially if I start to feel like I did this past year where the DELF is like sucking away my motivation to use French. But at least as of currently, I would like to be working towards that. So I really want to work on getting my speaking skills to the point where I would be ready to take one of those exams. And I've already got some things in place to do that. You'll hear about that in my January video. I'd also like to read 15 books in French this year, and I would really like if a a lot of these came from the francophone reading challenge that I'm doing. I talked a little bit about this in my 2022 recap video and I may make a video on this at some point, but I'm working on going through a francophone reading slash media in general challenge where I'm trying to read a book and watch a movie as possible and applicable from every francophone place. It's not necessarily francophone countries, I'm including certain territories, and it's also not just places where French is the dominant language, it's also places where French is just a very prominent language. But the best vague way to encapsulate it is reading and watching things from francophone places around the world. I'm currently listening to the audiobooks for the Twilight series in French and I am having a blast doing it honestly, so I don't want to box myself in and say that all 15 books need to be from that challenge. I want to allow myself to do weird stuff like this, but I would very much so like to also expand the places I'm reading things from and work on that challenge a bit as well. And lastly, I would like to 
start watching the news and like political debates and things like that in French. In general, I don't tend to watch the news. I'm much more of a read the news kind of person. And I don't really watch a lot of debates or political videos from most of the countries that speak my target languages. But I definitely like to be better about that this year. And I also know that politics and things like that very frequently come up on the Delph from what I've heard. So I think having that kind of basis of frequently listening to that would be beneficial for that as well. This year in German, I would really like to just finish working on all of the B2 related resources that I'm still using and move on to C1 stuff. I have been floating in this weird B2 C1 place with German for a long, long time. I feel like in 2019, my goal was like, reach a C1 in German. And while I have very much so stopped setting year goals that are reach a certain level, I have obviously continued to kind of be in that place. Obviously my German has also improved a lot since then, but I still feel like I'm in the same spot where B2 material feels right. There's still a lot of gaps that I'm working on filling when I use B2 material, but C1 material also feels that way as well. So when it came to starting an Aspect Annoy textbook, I was like, I could use the B2 textbook or I could use the C1 textbook. And ultimately, because I am not aiming to get a certification exam in German and don't need to be at a certain level, I opted to do the B2 textbook. I figured why would I skip over filling in the gaps that I can fill in with the B2 textbook when there's no reason not to. And so the same thing has really been happening with my Lingoda classes as well. I decided to start with the lowest B2 classes and really work my way through the B2 levels. I'm not necessarily taking every class from all of the B2 levels. There's, I think, B2.1, B2.2, and B2.3, but I would like to go through each of those stages. So I've moved on right now to B2.2, and that's what I'm going into this year working on. So just in general, I would like to finish the Aspect Annoy B2 book, and I would like to finish all of those Lingoda B2 classes. Not necessarily every single class, but enough that I'm kind of completing the level enough to move on to the next one. And then before the end of this year, I would really like to start working on C1 material. So using Aspect Annoy C1, taking Lingoda C1 classes, I'd really like to actually take all of the Lingoda C1 classes and get the C1 certificate that they offer for completing classes. I don't need a German certificate and my goal is never to get certificates, but I just think that would be really cool. And so I think I'm just gonna make that a goal. So that way I am even more driven to take Lingoda classes, even though I'm just kind of driven on my own because I really enjoy them and I feel like they're really beneficial. I would like to read five books in German this year. I want three of those to be the last three Percy Jackson books because I have been saying I want to finish the Percy Jackson series in German for years now. So I definitely really, really want to finish that. I'm getting to a point where those books are easy-ish for me to read. There's definitely still new words for me being fantasy books. I'm always going to run into new words in those books, but I'd like to move on to slightly more difficult books. And so once I finish those, the other two books that I want to read this year can be literally anything. I kind of want to read a crime novel. I know that those are very popular among German learners, so I think it would be cool to kind of get that German learning experience. And I have one that's from some series where each book takes place in like a different region of Germany. I found it at Half Price Books and it looked good, but I don't really know all that much about it. But I think that that could be cool to read this year because it also, again, touches on kind of that more cultural aspect, or at least in theory it does. Again, I don't really know anything about this book. It was one of those where it was a really good price at the used bookstore. It was in German, looked pretty interesting, I bought it. And carrying over from last year, I would like to finish watching Dark. I have been watching Dark for a year and a half now probably, but I just haven't actually been watching episodes of it. I'm currently in season two. It would be very easy for me to actually just finish this show. So I would really like to do that. I'd also like to finish listening to the last three Big Finish audios in German. I listened to three in 2022, but I was saving the last three so I could savor them while trail skating or something like that. But I would like to hopefully get that savoring time in this year. And lastly, I would like to do a review of cases, maybe set up some lessons that are specifically focused on cases and having a tutor kind of just talk to me in situations that required me to use a certain case and correcting me when I get it wrong, maybe doing some more writing exercises, a couple drills from grammar books, overall just reviewing when I'm supposed to use certain things and how those articles look for those cases and that sort of thing. I would love to end this year feeling just 
a lot more confident about that aspect of my German. For Spanish, I would really, really love to connect more with the Hispanophone world through media. There are so many books and so many movies that are originally in Spanish, and I really have just been missing out on those things. I am planning to do the same media challenge I'm doing with the Francophone world in Spanish, where I watch a movie and read a book as possible from every Spanish-speaking territory slash country. The Spanish one is actually a lot less complicated. There are a lot fewer places on the list, and also just a lot less of me deciding what counts as what, and me doing things like deciding that Martinique and Guadeloupe are gonna be their own places instead of territories of France. I wasn't really expecting that to be the case, but my French list is like 50 places long, and the Spanish list is like 24 places long. So I'd like to read four books in Spanish this year. I really do not read in Spanish very often, so this is actually a really big goal for me, but I'd really love to read more in Spanish. Those are the books that are really the most accessible to me. In pretty much any bookstore, I can get books in English or in Spanish, so it sort of doesn't make sense how little I read in Spanish. So whether those are for the challenge or are just translations of other things, I would really like to push myself to read more this year in Spanish. I would like to watch at least one movie from 10 different countries. If you have any recommendations, I would love to hear them. Also related to culture and various countries that speak Spanish, I would like to try to learn about like two different places a month. I had a similar goal to this like two years ago, but the way that I wanna do it this time is just kind of like picking a country and then reading an article, watching a YouTube video, whatever, on any topic I want from that country. It can be watching a political debate. It can be learning about a part of history. And then I want to either write about that topic or talk a little bit about it, just so I can kind of connect with those places a little bit better and have a better understanding of the Spanish speaking world. Definitely one good thing about studying French in school and getting a degree in it is I learned a lot about the Francophone world across a lot of different topics. Do I know everything? Absolutely not. But I do know a lot more than I do about many, many places that speak Spanish. So I want to do that this year and do it in a way that pushes me to improve both my input and my output. I'd also like to start speaking again. I put my Spanish lessons on pause this year and kind of never picked them back back up even though I intended to. So this next year I definitely want to get in contact with my Spanish tutor again and definitely start speaking Spanish a lot more than I did this past year. And lastly, another goal that I'm bringing over from last year that was actually brought over from the year before. I would really like to work on reviewing and just cleaning up my Spanish grammar. I definitely wanted to do this anyway to feel more confident about my Spanish grammar, but I definitely think that I need this even more now after this last year since I did not speak that much Spanish. So very similar with how I want to work on my German cases, I would just like to do some exercises, work specifically on certain grammar points that give me trouble with my tutor, just overall put a bit of time and work into that this year. This year for Italian, I'm really just working on maintaining the language and kind of involuntarily improving it from using it. I'm also really going to be more focused on reading and listening to things. I don't really have so much of a need to speak Italian at the moment. I really started learning the language so that I could watch movies movies, sometimes read some books, and eventually hopefully travel to Italy. And as much as I would love to, I don't think that I will be traveling to Italy anytime soon. So I'm kind of okay not really working so much on my speaking this year and really just working on the things that I can be doing right now and the reasons that I started learning Italian that I can already be doing. So I would like to watch at least 10 movies in Italian. I really want to focus more on films that have been relevant in the past few years. So if you have any recommendations for things that either you really liked or were really culturally relevant in the last 10 or less years, I would love to hear about them, especially if they're things that came out more in the last like two years or five years. And I'd also just like to work on building up my vocabulary. I would really like to start reading books in Italian. I don't think I've ever read a book in Italian, but a lot of the books that I wanna read are a little bit more advanced than my level. So I'd just like to work on building up my vocabulary so I can eventually start to do that. This year, I'm gonna be trying to get my ASL to a 
pretty comfortable conversational level. I just would like to feel more comfortable discussing day-to-day -day things and be able to have a little bit more complex conversations than I can right now. And to do that, I would like to finish the queer ASL classes if scheduling allows. There were a couple reasons I didn't finish all of the courses they offer last year, but one of them was just that at the higher levels, there's usually only one offering of each class per cycle. And when that doesn't align with my schedule, it means that I just kind of need to sit that cycle out. And so there is definitely the possibility where again this year, all of the classes or at least some of the classes don't necessarily ever align with my schedule. And that's totally okay. Obviously, I don't have control over when each class is held. So if I don't complete this goal because it just so happened that every offering of 104 Conversation A was held while I have other things going on, I'm not going to beat myself up over it. There are other things that I can do to work on my ASL. And speaking of which, I really want to just figure out what my next step is, both in terms of what I'm going to be doing outside of the queer ASL classes, and then also what I plan to do after I finish taking all of their classes. Last year, I definitely noticed that in the times where I wasn't signed up for a class, I was just not really doing much at all. And then when I tried to kind of put in a little more effort and do more stuff on my own, I realized that I just kind of felt a bit directionless. I had some resources that I thought would be good for me to use outside of Queer ISL, then found that they kind of covered things that I had already learned from my classes. So I need to just figure out what my next step is. And I wanted to figure it out before this video so that way I could you know, include whatever it is as a goal, but I just haven't figured out what it is yet. So that's definitely something that by my six month update, I should have adjusted to be an actual more concrete goal. But for now, at least as you'll hear in my six month goals, the goal is just to figure out what my next step is. I would like to get better about doing the things that I can to make ASL a little bit easier on my body. I talked a bit about this in my 2022 recap, but when I sign, it ends up making my hands and wrists have a bit more nerve pain. And I found a few things that kind of help. I can wear carpal tunnel braces and that helps a bit. Stretching also helps a bit, but I don't feel like I'm great about always stretching before and after. And I also just feel like there's probably more that I can do to help my body not feel as bad when I sign and make it so that I can more consistently sign because currently I end up needing to take these long pauses. I know that other than surgery, you cannot just like your carpal tunnel in the span of a year, but I'd just like to this year find ways that I can continue to study ASL and continue to use American Sign Language while also not being in pain. And lastly, I would like to watch a lot of media with American Sign Language in it. Just in general, I feel like my receptive signing could use a bit of work. And just like with all of my other languages, I just would like to get a chance to explore media and experience media that I wouldn't get to experience in this way if it weren't for having learned the language. For Bulgarian, I would like to focus my studies this year and just usage of Bulgarian this year around preparing to take a trip to Bulgaria. Now, before all of you get in the comments so excited, I have no plans to go to Bulgaria. I guess I have a plan in the sense of like, someday I would really Really, really like to go to Bulgaria. I do plan to eventually visit, but I don't have any concrete plans. I don't have a trip booked for this year or anything like that. My goal is just this because I would like to have a practical application that I'm working towards. I make much slower progress with Bulgarian than I do with any other language, and I think in past years kind of framing my Bulgarian goal as being to get it to an intermediate level so I feel more comfortable not having it be my main focus. I just always end up ending the year feeling a little bit disappointed even though I am making a lot of progress and putting in a lot of time and effort. So instead this year I'm framing things more as what do I feel like I need to know and need to be able to do in order to really have the fullest experience when I eventually do travel to Bulgaria. And obviously I could go to Bulgaria knowing just what I know right now. I could even have gone knowing absolutely nothing. And I also obviously could say that I need to have like a C2 level before I go because I want to be able to know and understand absolutely everything. But I don't feel like I need to know absolutely everything to really enjoy a visit to Bulgaria. And I also know that it's going to be quite expensive for me to eventually visit Bulgaria. And at least as long as I live in Texas, I am not going to be making frequent trips to Bulgaria. So I don't want to go until I feel like I can experience all of the things that I hope to experience. So for a Bulgarian, it's really just looking at what would I need to know 
in order to be able to understand things and experience the things that I would want to go to do and go to see? What would I need to be able to say to have conversations on a day-to-day -day basis? And what from all of that is missing from what I can do right now? So my first goal is a carryover from last year. It's still a bit of a stretch goal, I think, but it's also one that I really hope I can make happen. And that's to have my lessons 100% in Bulgarian by the end of the year, or at least mostly in Bulgarian. If my teacher occasionally needs to speak English, that's okay. But I do have monolingual lessons in all of my other languages, and I would like to finally get Bulgarian at that point too. I'd like to finish reading my first book in Bulgarian. I'm like three pages into one right now, but I want to finish one this year. I want to finish doing all of the Glossika course. I started from scratch when I started using it, even though I could have started at a higher level. And I'm currently like 70% done, I want to say, with the A1 low level. So I'd like to finish the whole thing. We'll have to see. This might be one that I kind of opt to not do just because once I hit like B2, C1 stuff, I may just be like, this is not at all at my level. I need to stop this. But I kind of want to complete it just to get exposed to that kind of thing and see those sentences, even if they are a bit beyond what I'm ready for, and use them as shadowing practice, even if I'm not necessarily following every word in the sentence. I think it can be a good way for me to work on my pronunciation and getting the stress and intonation of the language a little bit more natural when I speak. I would also love to be able to feel comfortable listening to a podcast by the end of the year. It can be a very, very simple podcast. I don't really care. I just feel like listening is one of the things that I have the most trouble with with Bulgarian. I think because my Bulgarian learning journey has really not included actual Bulgarian media the way that all of my other languages have from the beginning of me learning them, it's been very hard for me to find TV and movies and YouTube videos, etc. in Bulgarian. So this year I need to do some more digging and I really need to work on my listening a lot. And I hope that my way that I can kind of test that is by listening to a podcast and really being able to follow it. I also would really like to learn some more tenses. Currently, I feel like I'm only really comfortable using the aortist past, present, and then future. So there is a lot of stuff that I just can't really express right now because I just do not have the actual grammatical tense tense knowledge to form those sentences. Obviously, I can make a sentence that might be understandable, but I can't really express the thing that I want to. And so I'd really like to expand the things that I can express by working a little bit on my grammar. And lastly, I'd also really like to work on expanding my vocabulary. This is one that I can't really measure. I do not like counting number of words that I know or anything like that. I also don't know where I would even begin with that since I learned so many words talking to my tutor or reading or watching things. But I definitely, again, feel like I'm very limited in what I can say because I'm very limited in the number of words that I know. And that also, of course, plays a huge role in my listening comprehension issues. If I only know five out of ten words in a sentence, it's often very hard for me to follow what the sentence actually is. So obviously I don't really have a way to measure this for the end of the year or for six months in, but I think my month-to-month -month goals will cover ways in which I am learning those words and also hopefully just by the end of the year I'll feel more comfortable listening to things and saying things and through that we'll kind of know that I did expand my vocabulary. And the last language on my list, surprise surprise, is once again Japanese. The past few years I have said that I would really like to start learning Japanese but not been sure that it's gonna happen and I guess this year it's sort of the same. I really do not want to start learning Japanese until I feel like my Bulgarian is in a place where I feel okay not having that be my main focus all the time. And for me, that is going to be when it is at a level where I can comfortably learn a lot just through watching TV and through watching videos and speaking in Bulgarian to my tutor. I think right now it's like I need a lot of hand-holding with my tutor to work on things. And when I watch vlogs on YouTube, I I can follow usually the full general premise of the video, but I don't really follow most of what is being said. So while all of my other goals this year really indicate that I 
would be at that level by the end of the year. Like I said, I just feel like I make really slow progress with Bulgarian and for that reason, I don't really know if I'm going to hit that point this year or more so, I guess, if I'll hit that point at like the halfway point this year and will be able to switch over to doing Japanese as my main language. However, my goal this year is yes, to finally start learning Japanese. I've really wanted to learn Japanese for so long. I think it is the language that has probably been on my languages to learn list for the longest. Like I have wanted to learn Japanese since before I really figured out how I could learn languages on my own. I have wanted to learn Japanese since I was in like elementary school. And I've been saying that it was going to be my next language since I think I graduated high school. It just then happened that Spanish and Italian kind of came into my life and those got to happen before Japanese. And then the last few years, I just haven't been ready, even though I would really like to learn it. So I'm setting very small goals this year, but I really, really hope that I will actually get to accomplish them. And my goals are literally just to learn how to write in Japanese. And I would like to just start to build a strong foundation. So learn some basic phrases, get really comfortable with the pronunciation, whatever I end up feeling like I want to work on to really set myself up for success next year. And much like last year, I am leaving myself open to dabbling in Japanese before it is time for me to actually seriously study it. I am not ready to have Japanese be my main language on January 1st. I'm really going to be doubling down on Bulgarian at the start of this year and also doing quite a bit with my French. But if in that time I really, really want to do a little bit of Japanese, that is okay. So I really hope that those goals happen, but like I said, very contingent on my Bulgarian, so we'll just have to see. Also, speaking of dabbling in Japanese, I once again, like last year, would like to just open myself up to dabbling this year. For all I've talked about being intentional with my time and really committing myself to my target languages, I never want language learning to feel like something I do because I have to do it or feel like it's mainly driven by discipline. Definitely think discipline is very important in my language learning, but I also want it to be something that's just fun for me. And if I really feel like learning a little bit of another language that I'm not planning to take seriously or learning a bit of Japanese and Scottish Gaelic, which are languages that I hope to take seriously in the future, but just don't have the time for right now, I want to let myself do that. And I don't want to feel guilty and feel like I am wasting time that I should be spending on French or something like that. If that's what I want to do, then that's cool. But no specific dabbling goals, of course, because that kind of takes away the point of it. So those are all of my overall year goals. I will be working on those throughout all 12 months, setting different monthly goals every single month to make sure that those things get done. And I also have broken those things down into a sort of plan slash list of goals for the next six months. For the first six months of this year, aka until July 1st, my tier one priorities or my top languages that I'm really going to be putting effort into are going to be Bulgarian, and French. Bulgarian, obvious reasons, it's been my top priority for a while now, and I just need a little bit more structure and routine with my learning with. And French is definitely a bit of a weird one for me. It feels very weird for that to be a top priority for me, but I'm already signed up for a conversation-based French class for the first two months of the year, and I think after that I'm really just gonna work on some other things. Again, don't really know what my plans totally are with taking the DELF, but I think ideally I would like to spend the first half of the year working on preparing to take the exam. But if I come back in six months and have totally not done that and even put a different language as my other top priority, I will actually be totally okay with that. My DELF plans are very, very casual and flexible. I don't necessarily know I'll be taking it this year or know that I really want to prepare to take it this year. My second tier priority languages are gonna be Spanish and German. And like I said, if one of those moves up to my top tier spot, totally fine. I definitely want a little bit of structure in my learning this first half of the year. Things like reviewing grammar in Spanish and working on improving my cases in German. I really want to make sure that I'm speaking them both fairly often at least. But beyond that, I'm really cool just kind of like watching movies, watching TV, reading books, maintaining my level and improving through doing things in the language. My tier three priorities then are going to be ASL and Italian. I'm planning to really spend the first half of this year mainly working on just maintaining my level in both of these and then improving in whatever ways I happen to because obviously I'm still going to be improving in some way. There's no way to really 
stop improving altogether. But if I do have a little bit of extra time or an ASL class comes up that does look like it really fits in my schedule, then I may do a little bit more. But if I need to free up some time in my schedule and not do as much intensive study in any of my languages, I would like it to be those two. And then to kind of keep with my more flexible overall goals, so that way I can really be specific in my month to month goals, I decided to only set three goals per language for the first six months of the year. And these are mainly really just taking my overall year goals and kind of splitting them in half. So that way when I do my six month check-in, I can really easily kind of see if I'm on track or not. And the order of these is actually in an order, it's gonna be in the order of my priority system. So for Bulgarian, I would like to finish the B1 textbook that I'm using. I'm currently about a third of the way through. Similarly, I would like to finish Glossika up through the B1 low level. This should be pretty well aligned with the textbook and just pretty well aligned with where I'm currently at in my lessons with my tutor. And so it should really help to solidify things that I'm learning with other resources as well. And then I also would like to get a third of the way through the novel that I'm reading. I am saying a third because I feel like getting started is the hardest part. As I move on, my reading speed is going to increase. And as I move on, I'm obviously going to know more words. I'm going to be more comfortable reading. So I think it's not unreasonable to then expect myself to be able to do two thirds in the second half of the year. I think I'll go a little bit slower the first six months, not necessarily intentionally, but just based on where my level is. And then as I improve this year, I'll pick up that speed and be able to get through the second two thirds at the second half of the year. For French, I would like to complete the speaking class that I am taking for the first two months of the year because I don't know what scheduling will look like or what is going to be offered. I'm not necessarily planning or setting any goals around taking other classes, but as just like a back of my head goal, if I can take the next level speaking class or just any sort of C2 class, I would like to do so. I feel like a writing class could be really helpful just to remind me of how to use the French essay structure since I haven't had to do that since I graduated, but I'm not setting any sort of official goal there. I'd like to read at least five books towards my Francophone reading challenge. It would obviously be ideal if I read about seven or eight books in the first half of the year, but I definitely would like to at least get five towards my Francophone reading challenge done. For German, I would like to finish the Percy Jackson series. I want to read the three last books. I want to finally be done with it, which I say like I'm not enjoying reading it. I really am enjoying reading it. I just feel like I've been in the middle of this series for so long and I really would like to finish it and see how it ends and see what happens in the middle of it and just experience the rest of the series. Also, of course, that will put me on track for finishing my German reading goals. I'd like to finish watching Dark. This really should be doable in six months. I just actually need to put on the episodes. And I'd like to work through most, if not all, of the Aspect Annoy B2 book. As much as my goals are focused around reading and watching stuff for the first half of this year, I would like to just put a little bit of more structured learning time in. And this will also help me, of course, to finish up that goal of trying to get through B2 materials that I'm currently working on. For Spanish, I want to meet at least five times with my tutor. This is a very small goal considering I have six months to do it. But like I said, I don't know what the next six months look like. They could be super busy and I am also just getting back into it and have quite a few other goals for other languages. So for now, just five. If it really ends up just being like once a month, that's totally fine. I obviously would like to get that to be more frequent eventually, but I don't want to set so high of a goal that it's unrealistic or that I start to get into an all or nothing mindset about. It. To keep up with my media goals, I would like to watch five movies and read two books. Is it kind of cheating if I keep myself at three goals for Spanish by including two goals and one goal? Probably, but I'm doing it anyway. And I would like those five movies to all be from different countries. And I would like to do that learning about different countries thing for 12 countries. Obviously, the easy way to spread this out is to do two a month, but if that doesn't happen, that is also okay. I just would like to learn 12 different things at some point over the next six months. For Italian, I would like to watch five movies. I would really like to work on building my Italian Anki deck. I have been meaning to go through and distill my Italian notebook into flashcards. And as I watch things, I obviously will be writing down new vocabulary and can stick those in the deck as well. I just haven't really set up a flashcard deck for Italian yet. And because I want to work on my vocabulary, I feel like those things can go hand in hand. And I'd also just 
just really like to read, whether that's news articles or short stories or a play or a novel, literally anything goes. I just definitely would like to read a bit more in Italian because that's definitely something that I just don't do super often, even though I really love reading and it's very prominent in all of my other target languages and would also just be a really good way for me to work on maintaining my Italian. My goals for American Sign Language are to figure out what my next step is, register for another queer ASL class and take that, or if scheduling doesn't allow, start working on my next step, and to watch something or many somethings depending on what it is. If I start a TV show and watch all of the seasons of that, then obviously that can count, but if I want to take the approach of watching like vlogs or theater performances, then I would prefer to do a lot of those. This language definitely has the most vague six-month goals, and I don't love that, I'm gonna be honest, but because I just don't know what my next step really is right now, it's hard to kind of set more concrete goals. So really, I can give you a spoiler now, in January, one of my goals is definitely gonna be to figure out what the heck is going on with that. And so those are my goals for 2023 and for the first six months of this year. That is not everything that I hope and plan to do in 2023. Because I'm setting monthly goals, there will be lots of other resource-based goals that I set that come up month to month. And I really hope that in my 2023 recap, I am not only saying whether I accomplished these goals, but I'm also saying I completed these textbooks for Bulgarian or read these books in German and that sort of thing. Things that I maybe don't mention right now, but will decide to do as the year goes on. Taking a totally different approach this year, so we'll have to see how it goes, but I am feeling really, really excited about this year and about my way of planning out my language goals this year. As always, I would love to hear what your plans are for this next year, whether you're keeping things the same as in previous years or also totally changing up your approach and just what languages you're learning and what your goals for them are. This is definitely one of my favorite comment sections of the year. I love reading through what everyone is doing. If you made a language goals video or posted it on social media somewhere, feel free to tag me in it or send it to me. I love watching these. I love reading people's goals and selfishly, it's also just a great way for me to find new people to watch and new people to follow. So if you've ever had the desire to self-promo your language account and you have posted about your goals recently, now is your time to shine. Polyglot progress wise, I'm going to be sticking with not uploading weekly, at least for the time being, but I do have some really, really exciting videos planned and I think, really, really hope that I should be able to post a lot more than I did this past year. I'm really excited for this next year. I hope that you are too and I hope that you're having a really happy New Year's time. I will see you in the next one and remember, Practice makes progress.